How many people recognize the username JK Rajmal? Not very many, I'd imagine, since a lot of people are only referred to as mods by the simple letters JK. Apostrophe S. JK's. It's the JK Skyrim guy, and he has produced a player home mod. His first one, in fact, if you can believe it. Over the mountains and through the woods to JK's Riverfall Cottage we go. After trials and tribulations in the form of multiple Skyrim updates, a new version of Skyrim altogether, and producing what is one of the most well-known series of mods utilized by the vast quantities of bipedal organisms that are humankind, JK decided it was time to settle down and build a home instead of overhauling the entirety of Nordic architecture inside and out without the express permission of the residences. And by golly gosh darn is it wonderfully constructed. From the gorgeous location to the incredible tower that gives you an overlook of the landscape, this little abode shoulder to shoulder with Adobe has everything a new resident or seasoned of Skyrim could ever want for. Starting at the entrance, we've but a bridge to cross before we're at our final destination. On the other side awaits our mighty steed holding up in the nicely placed stable. To our left is a fish hatchery that's bound to fill our plates and our bellies. Further onto the grounds, we'll find a chopping block and a decent amount of various flowers. However, there are plenty of little planters to plant whatever plantable plant you need to plant plainly on your palette, plopped precisely and perfectly in a palm full of places. Proceeding up the hill, there's also a chicken coop for delicious eggs. And an outhouse. The outdoor smithing area is nice and cozy with a gorgeous overlook of the Whiteburn capital. There's a tanning rack, workbench, grindstone, smelter, and anvil, with labeled storage for leather and pelts, or in charcoal, in the form of two barrels, and ingots. Were you expecting more? Well, not every section can be a bit. Now, time for a section with a bit. The tower that casts a long shadow over the area. Despite the looks and expectations, this isn't a pillar of combat, rather a solid obelisk for the finer arts. Taking a step in reveals an absolutely wondrous alcove of ingredients, all of which I will attempt to list off in a single breath. <sighs> Hanging moss, jazz bay, mora tampanello, swamp fungal pod, bleeding crown, glowing mushrooms, blister wart, creep clusters, fly amanita, imp school, white cap, namir's root, death bell, tundra cotton, dragon's tongue, thistle, lavender, nern root, nightshade, and wheat. <sighs> but there's only one of most of them, so, you know. Don't go too crazy, you potion-loving rascals, you. If we climb up top, there's an alchemy lab and arcane enchanter with named storage for potions and poisons, ingredients, and soul gems. Now that we've adequately examined the exterior of this gorgeous heaven on Nern, we should head on in by grabbing the key right out of this barrel here and plopping it in the lock. Touching toe first into this totally tubular townhouse of transcendent topology tenderly tries your tingling skin with a torching, trust-testing trench tethering the territory touting tasty treats. It's a fire pit. To your immediate right is a nicely labeled storage for firewood followed by a couple of decorative cabinets that I just really like personally. On the way around, you'll find a butter churn, an oven, and a cooking spit to make sure you have all the requirements for your delicious endeavors. The rest of the labeled storage options here are for sweet treats, meads and wines, cheeses and breads, vegetables, and fish and crab. Also, there's just a lot of hanging cooking ingredients, like a stadium pool. It's, it's genuinely impressive. Stepping up Steppington, the steps allows us to grace the second floor with our wondrous presence. The first thing you might notice is that this is a dining area. There's seating for six and a bar to go with it. There's also three side bedrooms to bequeath unto thine followers shouldst thou see it fit. The second thing you'll definitely notice, however, is the ridiculous amount of weapon and armor displays in this dining area. Eight weapon plaques, five shield racks, Three display cases and three mannequins line the area, for some reason. Not only that, but there's a named storage for weapons and armor. I don't know about you, but I don't want to hear Uncle Gargleburr tell the story about how he obtained the Targe of the Blooded for the 900th time, just because it happens to be mere inches away from his massive orcish cranium for reference. 
Leaving the nutrition consumption and body protection room, the second set of stairs takes us up to the master bedroom. There are two shield racks at either end of the hallway with three weapon plaques placed near the bed. You know, in case of an intruder. For named storage, there's clothes, boots and shoes, keys, and scrolls. There's also a small bookshelf as well in case you need to store your recipes or multiple copies of Uncommon Taste by the Gourmet. I'm just saying, there's a clear theme to this home. There's also a shrine of Xenathar in case you need to one up Bellator onto his ass during the next dealing with the money man himself. To end off the showcase of this beautiful brain baby by the mod author that typically tops the list of must-haves for a new character, I just have to say that his first entry into this category is positively wonderful and compressed. There's so much clutter everywhere in just the right places that it can't help but feel lived in and full of purpose in life, and that's the number one thing I want when I look for a player home mod. Thank you again JK for making location overhaul mods that motivate people to keep coming back to the game just to get a bit more of that sense of uniqueness you put into every change. And thank you to the people who watched this buster cluck of a sudden video to the end. Farewell. <laughs>